Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, back on a 2005-2006 property. Got some good stuff already. Did my first pass. Now I'm on the roof. Let's uh, me go through and show you everything I found today. All right, let's go check it out. First pass, we saw some water stains in the master bedroom area and the master bedroom closet. But right here we have some patches around the plumbing stack. So we know we've had some issues. So we, as an inspector, we are required to call this out. On the top, this roof is aged a little bit, but it's not terrible. Just uh, the only thing we found is a little bit of granule loss across the top. Your gutters are full. You wanna get the debris off the roof. And then uh, um, just some exposed fasteners there. If a tree is close, trees are close to your property, you always wanna let the client know, hey, there's trees present. But um, you know, this isn't a deficiency, it's just you educating the client about the property. One of our next call outs is the gutters. You can see that they're full. Also, there are some exposed fasteners right here and right here that you wanna re you wanna seal up. And uh, that's Warren uh, on the ladder. Our next deficiencies are these yard landmines. If they're in the yard, I'm guaranteed to step on them. Guaranteed. Walking around the close pass of the exterior, you can see the gutter leak and the damage it's caused to the fiber cement fascia there. And the home inspector's at it. You wanna reseal all of the light fixtures, hose bibs, outlets. All of it needs to be resealed, typically on every single property. The next thing is, is uh, we're gonna call out the, the damage to the door, the wood trim, and then there you go, right there too. And you can see where the gutter's been leaking on this side too. My wide pass, I'm typically uh, thinking about drainage around the structure, and you can see that the drainage is actually really good. It looks like they're on a top of a hill here, and their drainage issues are gonna be their neighbor's problems, not so much of theirs. So we got a newer Rood unit. It's a 2016, uh, it's a four ton 2016 unit. So it's probably, it is using the 410 Freon. So it's brand new. So you wanna make sure that the coils in the attic match. So the, around the outside, we have a little bit of damage on the water heater pan. And then uh, also the expansion joint needs to be resealed here. You can see that there's a little bit of separation here, uh, but still not that bad. And we have some damage on the on the mechanical exhaust where they drove the screw. It damaged both boards right there. So small finds on a home that's about 2005, 2006. Pretty common. Next spot here, you want to look for like efflorescence or any type of water or where algae is building. If you see this, you know this is a slow leak that happens over a period of time. This isn't something where you just turn it off and turn it back on. You know this leak is actually active because you see the algae building on the ground. So something like this on the outside, it's pretty minor. You just recommend for fill dirt. You can see the erosion that's happened on the edge here. Uh, this is normally typically just due to gutter overflow or water runoff on the roof. Whenever you're doing home inspections, make sure you pull the doors up and down. You wanna make sure that you catch the damage on the outside and the inside. This is something uh, worth calling out or documenting. You have an exposed Romex wire outside and it's plugged into an outlet here. So you wanna document it's not permanent and then if they do wanna keep it plugged in, it needs to be in conduit. On the outside, I'm going to look at the, the porch patio supports. You can see this one's under stress and a little bit of tension there. So definitely want to document anything like this. On the front side of the property, you can really see the shingles. They're not over the drip edge flashing. Since it's not installed properly, water will get behind this board and cause some damage. So like I showed you on the front side of the property, how those shingles weren't overhanged enough and the drip edge flashing's not properly installed. This is how it's supposed to be. So you can compare the front to back. If you're ever in a, a garage like this, make sure you take several photos just to cover you a little bit so make sure that you document even with heavy storage even though there's no damage you want this in the report 
on the roof right here. It doesn't show up too well on the camera, but uh, right in this location, you can see a dip. And I did crawl out through the window right here and the deck is soft and moist. So you really wanna pay attention and kind of scan across roofs like this and take your time and look for little pit spots like this. Another spot is in the attic. You have the mechanical exhaust vents not attached to the vents here. Uh, in Texas, we don't have this issue too much, but where it really freezes, you, know, you can cause moisture damage in a mold in the attic space if these aren't attached and going outside. Next space is, is actually, you'll see this in attic spaces, but you can see a path right here running through the insulation. This is signs of rodents. And then also the uh, trap kind of gives it away. So another thing that you want to pay attention to in the attic space. Next spot is in the attic space. You can really see uh, whenever you see buckets, yeah, it should send warning signs when you're in the attic. So you can see right here, we have, um, you have water lines, you got damaged decking. So all of this is reportable, but we know from being on the roof that they have done repairs in the past. So we have prior repairs, but you still want to document this damaged decking. Uh, for the coils, we matched up the coils. So you can see right here, uh, you have, oh, come on, focus. You can see right here, we have 410 Freon, but right here you can see, um, you can see that there's no P-trap on the primary drain line and there's no secondary drain line going into the pan. So these coils could fill up with water and possibly cause damage to the structure. So you definitely want to call this out. So this is kind of a, a cool spot too. You can see how that water from traveled down the, let me, the, traveled down the, the rafter here and you can see that it traveled down here, ran down this way, and then ran right there. So, you know, water travels in weird paths when you're in the attic. So, just because it's right there doesn't mean it's going to go directly down when you're at it, when you're in the attic space. Kind of one of your biggest challenges of being a home inspector: finding water. There you go, a, a 2005-ish property. You can see we're still going to find stuff. We find stuff all the time. All right, so. Remember, it's about de determining your tolerances whenever you're purchasing property. Are you okay with purchasing a property with these kinds of issues? And the more you watch these videos, the more you'll realize that all properties have issues, just matter which ones that you're okay with. All right, so that's Chris with the action. If you have any home inspection questions, please give us a call and please like, subscribe, and catch us on the next one. Thanks guys, bye.